Hello everyone, welcome. So in today's session, we are going to work on Iyengar yoga for strong legs. Yeah, I have um, had a number of students who are dealing with some vulnerability in their knees. And so this practice is intended to help strengthen the upper legs in particular. What I'm finding, what I'm noticing, is that there is a lot of uh, a frequent tendency to overutilize the lower leg and underutilize the upper leg in our yoga poses. And this, this practice, I hope, my intention here is to help bring awareness to that and have you be more intentional with how you're using your legs in your poses. So yeah, and I would like to also flag for you that in, in essence, that idea is just so much at the heart of what yoga practice is all about. Because while yoga is, of course, there's wonderful benefits to doing a regular yoga practice, health benefits, physical benefits, so strong legs, um, strong quadriceps there, and protecting your knees. Um, taking the stress by having strong thighs, you can take the stress off of the knee and just lighten that load a little bit. Um, that's all great. But the other thing that we do in our yoga practice is we bring light to areas that are dark, right? We bring um, awareness, sensitivity, alertness to areas that may be lacking consciousness. And this is truly the essence of yoga, right? We want to get to know ourselves. It is a practice of self-study. And so I think this little practice today is just a nice reminder of how some of these lessons, although there may be an underlying goal for some of you as you're doing this work, but how some of these lessons really do fit into that larger theme of self-exploration. Right? It's a practice of embodiment. What does it mean to be in this body and truly embrace that experience? Okay, I will leave it at that. Let's begin. Hey there. If you have a cranky back, stiff neck, if you're overweight, anxious, or if you simply don't look, feel, or resonate with the images of yoga on social media, you will definitely want to check out my online course, Iyengar Yoga Fundamentals. Okay, to begin, sit in Dandasana and then separate your legs about the width of the mat. You know, just within that frame. Okay, and we're going to start with the right leg. Okay, so if you watch this leg here and watch my foot, flex the foot. Okay, flex the foot like this so that it comes off the ground. And with your foot flexed, press your knee down, press your thigh down. All right, now from the back of your leg, extend away, reach into your right heel, and now keeping your leg absolutely straight, can you lay that heel down, like aim a little further ahead than it was before. Keep it straight, keep it straight, lower the heel down. Now take your hand and just feel the level of engagement of your thigh, right? Is it engaged? Press the knee down, press the thigh down, and again, don't let it bend. Maintain it, hold it for a moment, and then release, let it go. Okay, now we're gonna repeat. Um, I do wanna mention one thing here. Now if for you, when you flex the foot, and lift the heel comes up, there's any discomfort in the knee. Perhaps you have a tendency to hyperextend, you can do too much. And so if this is a problem for you, then take something. This is just a random pad, but you could take a, a washcloth, the corner of a blanket, and just place it behind the knee, okay? You wanna see that you're not having, you know, so much height that it's actually making the knee bend. You're just filling the space and then you can do the work still the same with that um, support behind you, okay? Nothing that we do today should create any pain in the knee, 
all right? You may feel strong work in the thigh and the hips, maybe even the feet, but there should not be pain in the knee. So please, if there is, stop, avoid that, okay? All right, so decide if you need that and collect it for yourself if you do. And now let's move on to the second side, okay? So left leg, flex your foot, press your knee down, press your thigh down, and now from the back of your leg, extend into your heel, and then keeping the leg absolutely straight, lower the heel down. Right, my leg starts to shake a little bit. It's hard to keep the leg straight. Okay, reach into the heel, lower it down, absolutely don't let it bend at all. Avoid any air coming in underneath there. And then hold the engagement, maintain it, hold it. You can feel with your hand. And then release. Okay, let's go again. Right leg, flex the foot, press your knee down, press your thigh down and then keeping the leg absolutely straight. Reach into the heel, aim your heel a little further forward than it was before, and open the back of the knee as you lower the heel to the ground, right? Open the back of the leg. Maintain, hold it, hold it, and then let go. Okay, left leg, second time. Flex the foot, press your knee down, press your thigh down, reach into your heel, extend, 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 maintain this absolutely straight leg, and then start to lower your heel down further ahead than before. Reach, reach, open the back of the leg more, 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 maintain the engagement, hold it for a little bit, and then release, undo, pause. Okay, let's do one more for good measure, okay? And this is the kind of thing that you can do. You can work up the repetitions, okay? Because, um, yeah, you may find that there's some engagement happening maybe in areas that don't typically happen for you in Dandasana, which is telling, right? Okay, last time here, right leg and sit tall, sit upright, use your arms, push off the floor, okay? Right leg, flex the foot. Press your knee down, press your thigh down. Now reach through the back of the leg, extend, extend, extend. Keeping the leg absolutely straight, lower your heel to the ground. Don't let it bend, don't let it bend. Don't let any air come in underneath there. Maintain it. And then let go. Okay, last time, second side. Flex the foot. Press your knee down, thigh down, reach into your heel, reach, 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 keeping the leg absolutely straight, start to lower the heel down, and again, don't let the knee bend. Maintain this engagement, maintain it. And then let go, okay, release, okay? now. We're working on opening the back of the knee and engaging the thigh, which is all good work, strong but good. And even though we're doing that, you may actually start to feel some work in the lower back, right? Some of those uh, spinal muscles uh, along the lumbar area. And so the seated postures can be challenging from that perspective. So sometimes I find if Seated, sitting in Dandasana is just a bit intense there for the lower back. I take Baddha Kanasana, right? Match the soles of the feet. And then did you see what I just did? You can make fists with your hands here, pump the buttock in, and then you can hold your big toes. If your arms are longer, you may be able to hold underneath, but notice that you're like not leaning forward, just fine where you can hold. And then you can also take a strap if that is better for you, but you can also have your hands behind you like so, okay? And then press your feet together, press the edges of your feet down into the floor, and now turn your thighs out. Externally rotate, let them really go. <laughs> and now from your inner groin to your inner knee, reach reach away, reach there. Outer hip, outer buttock, outer groin, into the body, 
right? Absorb the buttock flesh into the body and then lengthen your inner legs away again. And this is going to help release the back. All right. And then fold your knees together. Extend your legs to straight. Dandasana. Okay. For this next one, I want to point out just a couple of um, point of references. Okay. So first off, I'll give you a backside view here. So the buttocks, right? So all the way down here. And then we've got the hamstring, the back of the thighs. So there's a place where the back of the thighs and the buttocks meet, right? Just under here, right? The crease under the buttocks. And this is that junction between the back thigh and the buttocks. So I want to point that out because I'm going to reference that area. Okay, the other thing I'm going to reference is that inside each buttock there is a bone. Okay, and it is the buttock bone. That bone is round. Okay, so I mean, I sort of visualize it like, like a golf ball. And when something's round, you can kind of, you can land or roll towards the front of the bone or the back of the bone. Okay, so picture that bone and I'll be referencing the front of the buttock bone. The front of the buttock bone is closer to that junction between the back of the thigh and the buttock that I just pointed out. Okay, all right. Sit again in your dandasana and then just have your hands beside you. Okay, now you're going to lift your buttocks a little bit off the ground and this is not, it's not a, an arm strength exercise, okay? It, the idea here is just to get yourself hovering so that you're not touching the ground so that you can do the work. Okay, so separate your legs a little bit, hands on the floor, lean a little forward and now push into the floor and just hover, just lift yourself up a little. Now with your buttocks off the ground, from the back of your thighs, reach back, like you're reaching in that direction, right? Lift up, reach back. And now reach back and then land towards the front of your buttock bone. Reach back, front of the buttock bone, come back down and then spread that junction between the back of the thigh and the buttock. Really press down, deflate your thighs, and then slowly sit yourself upright. Press your knees down, thighs down, deep in these groins, right? That junction between the back thigh and the buttock there, spread it, should really be pressing down, and then lift up, lift up, Dandasana and then let go, okay? I don't know, could you feel that? It's a little bit different, right? You wanna learn where to land here and then how much um, engagement is needed to then lift your torso back upright. Okay, let's try it again. Hands on the floor. Again, legs are a little bit apart here. Hands on the floor, lean forward. Now lift yourself up, shoot the buttocks back open up the back of the thighs there where the thigh and buttock connect and now aim for the front of your buttock bone as you lower down front of the buttock bone spread that junction between the back thigh and buttock now deflate your thighs really press them down and then slowly sit yourself upright but maintain that power that pressure of your legs pressing down Feel this engagement, right? The legs ought to be engaged in a particular way. Can you make it happen? Dandasana. And then let go. Okay, one last time. Dandasana in this way. Okay, lean a little forward, press your hands down, lift up, shoot the buttocks back, and now aim for the front of the buttock bones, Aim for the front of the buttock bones, lay yourself back down, spread, open that junction between the back thigh and buttock. Now keep that, press everything down, don't let any air come in underneath there, and now sit yourself upright. And don't stop here, right? I don't know if you can tell, I'm still a little leaning forward, but from the low abdomen, lift up, thighs down, groins deep, chest up. 
and then let go. Okay, now as I showed before, you can always take Baddha Konasana, right, Baddha Konasana, just as a way, if you find that it helps to release the back muscles a little bit, um, take it as needed, right, as a break from some of this straight-legged work that we're doing. Okay, but we're gonna go with another sequence here. So this time sit in Dandasana with your legs straight and you can join the legs together. Okay, have your hands beside you, maybe a little bit back, broaden your collarbones, roll your shoulders back and lift your chest. Okay, now everything you've learned about Dandasana and how to engage your legs, can you translate that now? Okay, knees down, thighs down. Can you recreate the sensation, the texture, the engagement of the upper legs as we've been working with them so far? Okay, now maintain your left leg exactly where it is. Press the knee down, press the thigh down, and with your right leg only, raise the leg up and shift it, Upavista Kanasana. And then back to Dandasana. Okay, that leg remains poker stiff, right? Totally straight, do not let it bend. You can use your hands, push off the floor, sit tall, but avoid letting yourself roll to the back of those buttock bones. Stay centered, and for many of you, you'll likely need to aim for the front of the buttock bones in a hope of being centered on the buttock bones, okay? So watch that. Ready, push off the floor, chest up. Now right leg, one leg only, out to the side and back. Out to the side and back. Keep going, go five more times. As you're going, just watch and see that you're not leaning back. That's what I mean about going to the back of the buttock bones, I don't want that. Okay, chest up and then maintain that, maintain that out to the side and back, out to the side and back. Okay, two more and back. Maintain that stiffness, that engagement in the leg. Okay, back to Dandasana and we'll go for the second side. Okay, so now knees down, thighs down, broaden the back of the thighs. Use your hands even, broaden, spread that junction between the back thigh and buttocks and see can you get even more of the thigh to touch down. Okay, you can do what we started with, flex the foot, reach, 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 then lay the leg down. Do both sides, see what you can do, what technique works for you to get that engagement in the legs. Okay, now we're going for the left leg, out to the side and back, five times. Maintain it absolutely straight and left leg to the side and back, to the side and back. Keep going, notice if you're falling back on those buttock bones and avoid that. Okay, use the arms to your advantage and absolutely straight, to the side and back, to the side and back. Go for one more, and then release, pause. Okay, again, what is the release here for you? You wanna take Baddha Konasana. Okay, turn those thighs out at the outer hips, suck in, buttock flesh forward, chest up. Okay, if Baddha Konasana is not quite your thing, you can cross your legs, go for a little twist, Lift and turn, lift and turn, okay? Take the release as needed. Okay, now moving al along in this sequence, Dandasana, arms by your side, chest up, and now both legs at once, okay? Now here is really challenging not to lean back, but give it a, give it a go. Okay, straighten those legs completely. I hope by now you have a new understanding about what it means to straighten your legs. Not so simple. All right, ready? Upavista Kanasana, Dandasana, Upavista. Minimize the degree of leaning back. 
push off the floor, chest up. Dandasana, oh, Dandasana, Upavista Kanasana. Go for a few rounds. See how it is. Good. And then release. Okay, now you can get creative with this sequence. You can change it up. Um, you can even do things like, like this. You can add a brick into the equation and start challenging yourself to go higher, right? Take over and over, right? Two legs, one leg. You can play around with that. I'm gonna leave that to you, but just know that that is an option. Okay, moving along. I would like you now to sit up on some height. So I'm showing here seated up on a bolster. You can use something similar, a bolster, or you can use blankets, but I would fold the blankets um, long ways so that they resemble the shape of a bolster. The idea here is that you can sit on something and still have your hands easily touching that same height, okay? And now we're gonna get into some knee bending actions, okay? We've been working primarily on straightening the leg um, and we're gonna introduce some different knee bends. Okay, so sit in Dandasana up on your height. Use your hands, just broaden that junction between the back thigh and the buttock. Feel nice and open there. And separate your legs about a little, maybe a little wider than your hips. Okay, hook the center of your heels down, spread your toes, spread your toe mounds, and engage your legs. Okay, now if you have that tendency to hyperextend, because you're seated up on height, you've got to be extra mindful to avoid that. So put a break on that action if that applies to you. Okay, otherwise, knees down, thighs down, and back of the leg extend towards the heel. Okay, now have your hands on your height here, broaden your collarbones, roll your shoulders back, and lift your chest. Keep your left leg exactly where it is and just following the angle of your right leg. Keep the angle, okay? Draw the heel in, Marichyasana. Pound that heel down, lift your chest up. And then again, Dandasana, okay? Couple times, that same leg here. Follow the angle of your leg, which means that when you bring it into Marichyasana, the foot is just slightly angular. Keep that, give yourself that space. And then Dandasana, okay? Chest up. Now as you keep going, we'll go back and forth. Can you stay on the center of your buttock bones? Center of the buttock bones, chest up. Now, right leg, Marichyasana. Stamp that heel down, shoot the, deepen the groin and shoot the buttock bone deeper into your setup. And then Dandasana, Marichyasana. Dandasana, Marichyasana, Dandasana. Okay, second side. Straighten the leg, and then left leg, Marichyasana, follow the angle. Dandasana, Marichyasana, Dandasana, Marichyasana, Dandasana. Keep going, be so intentional with these actions. Are you falling back? Avoid that. Sacrum in and up, back ribs in and up. And as you bring your foot in, no, it's not just touching the floor. Pressurize your foot into the floor and then lift yourself up. Lift your abdomen up, your rib cage up. Dandasana, Marichyasana, Dandasana. Okay, release, rest for a moment, and let's build on that. Okay, so now you're gonna add another asana into the sequence. Starting with the right leg as before, okay, chest up, Marichyasana. Now from Marichyasana, roll onto the outer edge of the foot for Baddha Kanasana. And then again, Marichyasana, Dandasana. Okay, second leg, Dandasana, Marichyasana. Roll onto the outside edge of the foot, sharply press there, turn the thigh outward, back to Marichyasana, Dandasana. Couple times, both sides, okay? Right leg, Marichyasana. 
Roll onto the outer edge of the foot, press sharply down. Back up, Marichyasana, Dandasana. Left leg, Marichyasana, Bhadakanasana. Roll onto the edge of the foot, externally rotate your thigh. Back to Marichyasana, Dandasana. Okay, now watch what happens next. So this next round, we've got Dandasana, Marichyasana, Bhadakanasana, You'll come back up to Marichyasana, and here you may want to use your hands. I, I forgot to emphasize that, but for those other ones, I hope you were not using your hands. It's all about the leg action. For this one though, use your hand. You can hold the ankle, take it back onto your setup. So you're going for Virasana action with that leg, and then hands on your height and buttock up like almost like purvottanasana okay the buttock lifts the front of the thigh stretches and if you look at my straight leg okay that foot's coming towards the floor and then back down and you want to come out mindfully hold the ankle marichyasana dandasana okay all right let's give this a go sit tall start with your right leg Marichyasana, Bhadakanasana, back to Marichyasana, hold the ankle, straight back, the foot is on the bolster, lift up, head back, stretch the front of the thigh and mid buttock up, 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 and then back down, carefully come out through Marichyasana and then Dandasana. Okay, second side, Marichyasana, Bhadakanasana. I'm going faster, but as intentional with these actions, okay? You have it in your mind. And then back to Marichyasana, hold your ankle, Virasana, lift up, buttock up, push up, stretch the front of your left thigh, and then lower yourself back down, Marichyasana, Dandasana. Okay, back to the right side. Marichyasana, Bhadakanasana, Marichyasana, hold the ankle, Virasana, lift up like Purvottanasana, and back down. Come out the way you went in, okay? Let's go last time here, second side. Marichyasana. Bhadakanasana, sharply press, turn the thigh, back to Marichyasana, and now go for Virasana, lift up, head back, buttock up, stretch the quadricep, and then lower down, and come back out through Marichyasana. Extend the leg to straight, you can join the legs here, Dandasana, breathe. Okay, moving along. The next little mini sequence that we're gonna do, I wanted to show you how to use the corner of a blanket for height, okay? Some of you may not wish to use any height, that's fine, you can work like that, absolutely. Um, but a lot of students do do better with some height. Okay, the corner of the blanket, so you can see like so, is really useful in the sequence that we're going to do and in any seated poses where you actually want the thighs to drop down. So cross-legged position, swastikasana, um, padmasana it could, it could be, uh, upavista kanasana, it, it can be quite helpful. So let me show you why. Okay, I'm going to sit here just on the very corner. So you can see here's the, the tip here. And I'm gonna adjust myself here so that I get a reference from the edges of the blanket there on my 
uh, buttock bones there, right? I can start to feel that. And then that junction that I talked about between the back of the thighs and the buttocks there as well. You know, we're all little different sizes. Um, so it depends where you land and how you position yourself, but you can use the blanket to also give that area just something to push against, right? Because whenever you're touching something, it immediately brings some sensitivity, some awareness there. So this blanket can be quite helpful for that. And the bulk of the thigh can drop, right? It's not being, it's not being lifted by more, more height. So it can go down and we do want that, okay? So um, set yourself up. You can use this uh, angled blanket if, that, if you'd like to give that a try. I'm just using one. You can certainly stack them. You can do two or three, whatever you need. You can also, sometimes I work with a bolster going vertical, right? Long ways. And that does a similar kind of thing. Okay, so then separate your legs wide for Upavista Kanasana. And then with your right leg, so take your right hand here and just grip here behind the knee. You're gonna bend the leg a little so that you're, you've got a softness behind the knee. And now let's bring this leg here into Siddhasana, okay? Lift up, the foot lifts, the knee goes down, and then draw the calf flesh towards you. Turn externally at the hip and place the foot down so that you're on the very top of the foot, okay? So this heel is coming as close to its own groin as possible. Right, it's not coming over to the other leg. Heel is touching its own groin or in that direction. Okay, and then you can press that shin down, reach the inner leg away. Yeah, okay, half siddhasana. Have your hands behind you, sit tall. Now on your straight leg, on your left leg, let's go back to what we started with. Flex the foot, press your knee down, press your thigh down reach through the back of your leg and now as if you can lay your heel further forward than before, lower it down. Do not let the knee bend at all. Don't let it bend at all. Engage the thigh completely. Maintain this. Maintain what you've done on the right, what you've done on the left. Now inhale, lengthen upward. Exhale, turn yourself to the right. And with your left hand here, from your groin to about halfway down your thigh. So you're not touching the knee, you're nowhere near the knee, but from here, push away from you. Push, lengthen, use the heel of your hand and lengthen the thigh. Come to about that middle part of the thigh. Yes, and then anchor down into your left hip. So you're turning to the right, but still, can you straighten that left leg? Even though you're turning to the right, the focus is really on this straight leg. Turn and now press that left knee down, left thigh down, absolutely straighten. Lift yourself up, revolve yourself to the right more. And then again, straighten that left leg. Come back to the center. Now carefully come out of this bent leg position. You can again come out through Marichyasana. Straighten the leg. Okay, take it to the side, Upavista Kanasana. And now second side here. Draw the leg in, reach. And now calf flesh, I just sort of lift it up. And now turn externally at the hip and land on the top, top, top part of your foot, your ankle, your shin. Okay, notice as you go into the position what's happened. Where are you on those buttock bones? What's going on? Okay, and then again, stabilize, hands behind you, sit upright, and then straighten your right leg completely, intentionally. Flex the foot, press your knee down, thigh down. Extend through the back of the leg, reach through the heel, open the knee, open it up, and then lay the heel down further ahead than it was before. Do not let that leg bend at all. Engage the thigh muscle. Okay, maintain this. Inhale, lift up, 
exhale turn to the left and with your right hand reach away right lengthen that inner thigh towards your knee you can walk the left hand further back right to help facilitate your twist now often because you're twisting to the left this right buttock is going to want to come up but what I'm saying is use your hand against your bent leg to then shift more weight into your right buttock there and press the thigh down, press the knee down. From the base of your spine to the base of your skull, move the spine in, turn yourself to the left, maintain that focus, that awareness on an absolutely straight right leg and then release, come back to the center. Okay, carefully, Marichyasana, Dandasana. You can bring both legs into the center for a moment and pause here. Okay, I hope that made sense for you. First time, there's a lot of little details here. Let's do it one more time. We'll try to move through it a little bit faster and see um, what it's like you know the second time you can work with it first time especially if it's new if it's something new the body and the mind are just getting adjusted okay so separate your legs again upavista kanasna sit tall and now right leg half siddhasana top of the leg top of the leg adjust your upavista kanasna leg as we've been doing Flex the foot, press your knee down, thigh down, reach away, lower the heel down, absolutely engage the thigh. As you inhale, climb the front body upward, then exhale, turn yourself to the right, using the heel of your hand, lengthen away, shift the weight back into that left buttock there, outer hip corner, down, and press that thigh down deflate the thigh don't let it bulk up right it bulks up the knee lifts but flatten it flatten it reach into that left heel and then release come back to the center and then exit the asana through marichi asana dandasana and then out to the side upavista kanasana okay last time here second side you're going to take your hand here and then again siddhasana come to the top of the shin bone flex your right foot press your knee down press your thigh down reach into your heel and then maintaining this absolutely straight leg lower the heel down maintain this now lift and turn yourself to the left. Even though you're turning to the left, maintain that weight into the right buttock and deflate your right thigh. Now use your right hand and press away. Lengthen your inner leg towards your inner knee. Walk the right, uh, excuse me, the left hand further back and twist around even more. Breathe into it and then release come back to the center and again mindfully exit your asana dandasana next let's go for advokashvanasana and we're going to take advokashvanasana and then admuka virasana and the presentation that i'd like to show you is using um, a horizontal bolster okay and i'm doing it this way partly so that it'll provide nice support in both asanas without having to fuss too much moving from one pose to the other okay if this setup doesn't quite work for you you need a little more height you have a favorite way of doing these poses then please go ahead and make that a adjustment for yourself okay but in this presentation you're using the bolster to just give a little bit of resistance to your forearm bones. And this is gonna be more um, necessary, more helpful, I'd say, for certain students than for others. But there are 
often um, a situation where this forearm bone will just it will kind of sink down, and this prevents access from the shoulder uh, access into the shoulders um, from being as effective, penetrative as we want it to be. So just adjust here so that you get, you don't want the arms to bend, but that you get a little bit of a, a lift, a resistance there at the forearm bones. Okay, everything else is the same. You're gonna externally rotate your upper arms and then lift yourself up and back. Okay, adjust the weight of your legs towards the back of your toe mounds and now push the floor down, lift the hips up, and move your thighs back. And you've just done this glorious work on your legs, so now feel how they are now in this Admukha Svanasana. Okay, lift your kneecaps up, lift your thighs up, move your thighs back penetrate the groins from front to back and see do you have a sense of awareness alertness at that junction between the back of the thigh and the buttocks and if you don't what can you do to spark that awareness Okay, lower your head to neutral, neck is neutral, and it may work out that your forehead now just touches the bolster, right? I do find I have to just kind of adjust myself a little bit to get everything perfect. And then be here, breathe. Kneecaps up, thighs up, move those thighs back. Admukha Svanasana. And then when you're ready to come down, bend your knees and you'll take Admukha Virasana, toes together, knees apart. And then here, rest your forehead on the bolster have your elbows wide, bend them a little bit. The wrists can be soft, fingers can hang, and just take this supported Admukha Virasana. Stay here for a bit. Find your breath. and enjoy. Okay, now as you're in this pose, I wanted to offer you to say to those of you who may have um, a more experienced practice, you're regularly practicing your inversions, I would suggest that right now would be a fantastic time to go for Shirshasana, Salamba Shirshasana, as well as Salamba Sarvangasana, and work with these new legs, with these re-refined re legs, um, your variations. And just see, changing the orientation, how can your legs work for you now, right, in, these, in the inverted poses? Those of you who are not going for inversions, Admukha Virasana, you can end with this pose. And um, yeah, I'm going to leave you here for today. Okay, thank you so much for practicing with me. Um, I did just have the thought, if you want more advanced practices, if you'd like for me to do some more practices that include inversions, let me know. Uh, send me a message, leave a comment. I would, um, you know, I'm keen to, to respond to what people are, are, are wanting, right? Okay, I'll leave it at that for today. Thank you so much and until next time.